you going? My name's Kenny and welcome to Kenny Has A Crack. Uh, I decided to start a YouTube channel um, because I'm injured at the moment. Had a couple of surgeries, I can't work. And uh, I uh, like tinkering around with small engines and stuff like that. So I decided why not film the process. Um, it's a bit of fun, a bit of a laugh. Um, I'm building a uh, 2004 model YZF450 uh, from Yamaha. Um, I already own a 2014, that's the EFI 5 version, and I wanted a project that I could uh, build from the ground up, um, and literally that's what I'm doing. Every part that I've purchased is off a different bike between the 2003 and 2005 um, year models um, because they're interchangeable parts. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I uh, did a fair bit of work last year away from home and as you do, you get bored and do a fair bit of online shopping. And I managed to source an engine uh, from Townsville where my mum and dad live and uh, it all started from there. So um, yeah, I was gonna have a go at it and build myself a bike. Um, the little twist um, to the story is, now that I'm not working for a little while, um, the money's not coming in, um, so I am gonna be doing it on the cheap. And by on the cheap, I mean um, using <laughs> uh, reputable uh, online shopping apps such as uh, Banggood, um, AliExpress, uh, and yes, uh, Wish. Um, so yeah, I think it, it, it's going to be interesting, you know, uh, building a very powerful um, uh, 450cc four-stroke Japanese engineering and using cheap Chinese parts. So we'll see if it works. It may not. It may blow up the very first time I kick it over, but we'll have a laugh. Um, and not only that, some of the tools that I've needed um, to acquire, to do such things as uh, removing valves, um, pulling springs, uh, even down as far as cleaning uh, the parts, engine case, carby, um, and stuff like that. <clears throat> I've also purchased off those online um, apps that I mentioned previously. So uh, I guess it's going to be a bit of a mishmash of reviewing the tools, um, the parts, and ultimately um, the bike. So um, I'm pretty um, I'm pretty keen to do it. Look, I, I really want it to work. Um, I think it will work, as in the engine runs and uh, and I get you know reasonable power out of it. Um, the only issue is longevity of uh, of this particular bike, um, but you know time will tell. And this being the first instalment, I thought I'd introduce myself and uh, yeah, give you a rundown of what we're doing. Um, coming up next, I'm going to show you the uh, monstrosity uh, that I am starting with, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, thanks, and I hope you enjoy. So here we go. Well, there she is. The bare bones of the new project. Looks a bit rough, yeah. But you know what? It's a dirt bike. Dirt bikes are meant to be rough. Frame doesn't look too bad. I've had a bit of a squeeze. No cracks. Just the usual wear and tear, scuff marks. Ah, uh, you know bit dirty this and that but uh, yeah structurally A1 oh this is an A4 model uh, as you can see there that they decided to utilize the steel frame up in uh, this section here to store some engine oil which is pretty cool uh, huh. excuse the uh, Pro Tabor Wish handlebars, 
I was just chucking them on there to have a look. But uh, these forks, picked them up somewhere. The previous owner uh, decided to put this extremely sticky carbon fibre fake tape on the forks, which will literally take me about six months uh, to peel off. That's why I haven't done it yet. Uh, triple clamps. Got them off eBay. Clearly marked 04. Why is it F450? Seemed to work all right. I'll, I'll clean them up with the wire wheel. Get them looking all shiny. Front wheel. No dings, which is good. I'll obviously go along and tighten the spokes. But it seems to spin pretty good. Bearings even seem it. Not too bad. Um, front disc obviously hasn't been used for a while, so a bit of surface rust there. Swing arm off an 05. Pretty good, pretty straight. Um, I will uh, be cleaning all those stickers off, giving it a good clean with the brush, make it all nice and shiny. Back rim, same as the front. I believe it's off an 05, the same bike as the front wheels off. Um, all pretty good, just stock rims, nothing fancy. Uh, back to ice ain't a bit of use, so uh, yeah, they'll be replaced if I can be bothered. But yeah, that's the bare bones. All that, all of that probably cost me, I don't know, six, seven hundred bucks off a uh, very reputable backyard salesman. I was a little bit concerned there when I went around to his place to uh, to purchase them. Obviously, it was off uh, Facebook Marketplace. He. Uh, seemed to be running a clandestine operation in his back shed where he was dismantling uh, parts bikes but I checked the VIN on the frame and it wasn't stolen so that's good oh, I may as well show the beast that's my uh, oh, I guess you call it my um, bike that I uh, take out the bush and give it a strap, 2014 model, was it F450 with the centenary colours, not too bad, bit of a bugger though with being white plastics, they get dirty and greasy and a bit hard to clean but it's all good, uh, it's EFI, all that fancy technology, but yeah, nice and angry, I love it. Very, very nice bike to ride. Gear changes are awesome. Plenty of power, as you'd expect from an EFI. And uh, yeah, I love it. So yeah, it's a far cry from this behemoth in front. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Panning into the uh, workshop shed. Now this section of shelving contains all the parts and bits and bobs that I'll be using to uh, build the beast. I've got some plastics here, I've got a Vivo. There's a couple of subframes there, one of them doesn't fit, they mislabeled it. I'll go into more detail later, but uh, check this out from Wish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right Yeah. Yep, that'll work. I mean, it's a dirt bike. It's going to be loud anyway, isn't it? Who cares? Get up there. Uh, what have we got in here? More parts and bits and bobs and whatnot. More filters. Bits and pieces that I've collected over the last six months. And to the workbench. Oh, there she is. 
everything a man will need to build a dodgy dirt bike. That's right, Nolsey. So, uh, yeah, got everything we need, nice and organised. Got the laptop here with the workshop manual, which is amazing. I must admit, the best $12 I've ever spent. Underneath, got the air compressor, got the cheapest welder that you can buy in the universe. Um, in the back there, you'll see the heart of the project, which is the bottom end, half the head of the 04 Thumper motor. In here, bits and pieces, and carby and whatnot. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get more familiar with it as the project gets moving. So yeah, I don't know what else to say, but I'm um, pretty keen to get this done. I mean, look at it. Isn't it the ugliest, ugliest thing you've seen? Hopefully I can turn this uh, into the beautiful swan over here. But anyway, it'll be fun nonetheless. Yeah, that's about it. Time to uh, move on to the first stage, which I've had a bit of a go last week, I will admit. Got out of hospital and I was a bit sore and sorry for myself, so I come down here and as any man that's supposed to be recovering with his leg above his heart in the horizontal position, comes down to his shed and gets the wire wheel out and goes nuts on uh, cast aluminium. That's what a man does. So yeah, next uh, we'll get into the carby and I'll show you what I've done so far. Yeah, so uh, when I first start a project, I uh, like to take photos of everything uh, as it comes. Um, so. Hopefully I don't put something back the wrong way. Um, and just sort of get a feel of what the, you know, the parts are going to be like, quality, if there's any issues. Uh, previous owners have, you know, had a poke around and might have threaded a bolt or a tooth missing off a uh, cog or, you know, a leaking gasket or something like that. Anyway, I take photos from the start like I've done here in this slideshow, sort of to have a bit of a look. Um, what I've got to uh, work with. Um, the history with this uh, 450 motor, um, I bought it off a bloke who is a mechanic and uh, he bought it as a parts motor. Uh, as far as he was aware, it was a good running motor. Um, he only grabbed something off the motor. I haven't found what that is yet, but uh, when I do, I'm sure um, I'll be able to find a part somewhere because it's quite a common motor. Um, very powerful, as I said before. Um, uh, get it running right, uh, get the valve clearances right, um, and she should be good to go. But yeah, this is the, um, obviously the guts, the case. Um, right now we're, we're, uh, uh, we're having a look at the carby as I found it, um, in the box, obviously dismantled, there's a lot of pieces missing off it. But again, I just took some photos just to, um, have a look at the general state of it. Uh, not too bad internally. Not too bad at all. It had been sitting for quite a while. Um, I could notice because um, the aluminium actually had started anodizing inside. Um, usually doesn't do that because it's got fuel uh, and in an engine case scenario it's got oil. So yeah, it's been sitting apart for a long time. Um, but essentially all the parts are there. Um, there's the, uh, the pump, uh, the, the uh, throttle pump. Um, sort of half dismantled, but I've got, I've got all the parts there. <coughs> That's where the jets were, and the bowl attaches to the bottom of that. It doesn't look too bad. The bowl itself, which is coming up. Um, oh, hello. We're looking at the uh, uh, the cams now. Um, again, I just chucked them in there um, just to see if there's, you know, 
you know, they're sitting nice and, and whatnot. There doesn't seem to be too much wear on the on the moving parts. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. They're pretty robust um, engines if you can get if you can get the oil up into that area and by that you need to change the oil quite regularly between rides. Um, in this case it seems to have been the case. Uh, there's not too much uh, burn marks uh, up in that up in that area which means that things haven't got too hot which is a plus. Uh, as heat and metal uh, causes it to do crazy things. Yeah so uh, there's the head he's, he's obviously pulled that off. Um, had had a bit of look at a bit of a look at that. Um, let's have a cover there. Um, yeah, it's all it's all pretty stock standard. I'm sure um, you guys watching this have seen uh, one or more of uh, similar motors. Um, yeah, it, it all seems like a pretty standard base to work from. Um, again, this is how I found it. Uh, there's some head bolts there, and amongst other things. Um, all sort of dropped into that little ice cream dish. Uh, well, that's interesting as well. And there's all parts in there for the carby, even for the valves, for the for, for everything. So every little tiny washer and screw and everything's in one bucket. I've tried to pull it apart and have a photo, uh, just in case I drop it under the workbench. I know what I'm missing. So yeah, that's what I what I like to do when uh, when I start a project. So uh, yeah, thanks for that. Um, We'll move right along, I'll show you what I've done. Right, oh, this is the box of goodies that I've been uh, collecting for the last, I don't know, six, eight months while I've been working away from home. Um, the air box I got off the backyard uh, reputable uh, bike dismantling company in Brisbane. Um, yeah, I'm gonna peel those stickers off and give her a bit of a clean up. It's a few bits like this flash card here is a bit wonky but a bit of heat gun should figure that out um yeah so i picked that up i think that's off an 05 05 um <laughs> got this off ebay it's a rebuild your bike when it blows up in the bush so it's a little thing you carry in your backpack weighs about 3.6 tons so that should be fun chuck that down there isn't that nice and shiny? Look at that. That's going to last all of three minutes when I take it for the first ride before it blows up. Um, anyway, yeah, this is the uh, bash plate. I got it from B&B Off-Road. Uh, another eBay purchase. Um, but this is an imported part from the US of A. So quality right there. About probably the only quality part I'm putting on the bike. Right, what have we got here? Oh yes, my uh, this is from Wish. My Pro Taper pad, uh, Pro Taper grips, it's handlebar risers. I've already got a set on the frame at the moment. You might have seen from an earlier video or earlier in the video. You can't have more than uh, one of everything. Two of everything. That doesn't make sense. Uh, RHK, this is actually another quality item. It's a ball bearing throttle um, assembly. Um, it's not the plastic ones that you get on uh, cheap bikes. Uh, it's, yeah, she's fully, fully good to go because that thing's gonna be um, stretched out all the way uh, when my fat ass gets on it. Uh, I believe this is off. This might have been off AliExpress. I only got this recently, I haven't had a real good look at it. Uh, possibly because I wasn't real impressed with it. So this is a heat shield, uh, carbon, carbon fiber heat shield, um, which basically looks like reconstituted uh, garbage bags. But yeah, that'll go on my, um, my header pipe that comes out of the motor. It's got the associated hose clamps and what not there. Um, again, yeah, that's another part I purchased online. Uh, it's a, off an original bike. It's a uh, engine guard uh, of, on the frame. Some more engine mounts. I've already got engine mounts, so that's not going to matter too much, but 
Oh, good. That's actually for my 2014 uh, bike. I don't know what it's doing in there. I haven't even opened this one. When did I get it? Oh, a bucket of fly, no. Um, but I think this is a throttle cable. This contraption is the rear brake assembly, including the oil, uh, the brake fluid line. Hasn't been cleaned up, ripped off. Don't, don't even know what year model bike this is ripped off. The RHK bolt kit. I do recommend not to muck around with cheap bolts when you're building a powerhouse such as this. Get the good stuff, and that way then you know things aren't gonna be flying out and um, spraying your mates when you're doing a burnout. Uh, bearing for the Monoshock, again, another good one. This is an all balls racing part. Uh, you'll see why I bought that. Uh, this thing here looks like it's been uh, designed and built by Henry Ford himself. It's had a hard life. I uh, don't even know if it's going to hold me yet, but the least I can do is, well, it doesn't even have a bearing, but the least I can do is to give it a little bit of love and we'll see how we go. What we got here? Um, it is the, I think this is a chain uh, runner bearing. Um, looks Pretty good. Oh yeah, uh, black, black uh, chain guide uh, for the uh, the uh, swing arm. Front brake calipers, and guess what? They had bloody Brembo pads in it. Now that's a bit fancy. But uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my, well you yeah, come with the bike, the Nissan. Um, Nissan, buddy, you know, set up. They're pretty good, mate. They're pretty good. What is this? That's a, uh, that fandangled alien contraption is a bearing puller that I got off uh, AliExpress. More bearings, I'll just shove them in wherever I find a hole. aftermarket cheapest chips brake pads because I can't compare with those Brembo ones. A front brake uh, reservoir with broken lever and that's pretty cool. Another swing arm protector black in colour uh, for the swing arm. And, you know, stickers that I will never use. But you know what? What the hell? These stickers might chuck them on the fridge. A threaded bolt. That's probably five seconds you'll never get back. Oh, here it is. I was looking for this bloody thing. Uh, this is a stage two uh, jet kit for that carby that I showed you earlier. From Sigma Jet. There it is there. It's got all the instructions that I won't read. Um, but yeah, it's got everything there for um, like it's even got a fancy chart to say that power low, power high. So I like those curves. They look pretty bloody good to me. Anyway, I'll chuck that in uh, when I get around to it. Yeah, it's got me. Oh, I bought some bark busters. Um, but I've got the mounts, but not the Bark Buster. So yeah, I don't know why I did that. Funnels. Yeah, good old NGK NGK Spark Bar. And that should give it some explosions in that uh, cheap piston. So yeah, 
Anyway, uh, that's what I've been collecting. Let me just straighten this up so I don't have to bend over. I am 40 something years of age. Um, that's what I've been collecting while away from home with my online shopping. Uh, there's still a few bits to get. You know, I've got a seat over there and a subframe and I need a fuel tank and an exhaust and you know what, uh, a radiator that might be needed in Australian summertime. Radiator hoses, uh, fuel hoses, carby breather hoses. I got a plastics kit um, from a Kerbis too, and that's not, I was gonna buy a Chinese one, but they don't bloody make them. Um, not for that bike anyway, which was really disappointing because they're plastic and China is awesome at plastic. And you would have thought they had, you know, stolen the uh, uh, the mold designs uh, off Yamaha as they do for most other motor vehicle companies, allegedly, and um, make their own, but they don't. They make it for pit bikes, um, and but not for Yamaha. So yeah, anyway, I bought an Acurbis uh, plastics kit, uh, black in colour. I was gonna black out the beast. Uh, gonna get Jace to uh, spray me a, um, a black frame. I don't know if I'm gonna do the swing arm. I probably won't. We'll see how we go, but I reckon it'll look pretty, look pretty cool black. It'll look tough at least, even though it probably won't run. So yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd uh, give the once over to all the parts that I've been collecting uh, over the last you know, eight, even 12 months. So yeah, a lot of planning and hard work has gone into my online shopping addiction. So uh, let's see it, if it pays off. This is all the stuff I bought online. These are my apps that I use for, to facilitate my addiction to online shopping. The Bark Busters I bought off Wish, um, which only came with the fittings and not the Bark Busters. My bad. The Fabulous Exhaust, um, which is about uh, good enough for a 50cc motorcycle, but all chucker on. Acropovic, of course. Handlebars, risers, grips, pretty good. We'll see when they fold, but pretty good. A bearing puller when I decided that I was going to do a lower end uh, bottom end rebuild, but I'm not now, so that's just for, uh, I don't know, have a look at it. This is my imitation Dremel. Uh, battery lasted probably five minutes, but it was pretty good. Can't complain for about nine dollars. Wish again. This is uh, my torque wrench digital adapter. Came with the torque wrench, not the adapters. They gave me a full refund. That was pretty nice of them. Seems to work okay. This is a top mounted spray gun for my air compressor for sandblasting. Haven't got it yet, but uh, might be easier than using the wire wheel and ripping my arms and legs open. So we'll see. And uh, carby cleaners, they're just like little pipe cleaners. Um, they should be good to use down the track. Everything's clean now. Uh, this is the piston and gasket kit, 45 US as you can see. I mean, you couldn't even make it for that. So we'll see how it goes. I reckon, oh, I've got confidence it'll work for five minutes. Uh, this is a Carby Rebuild Kit, looks pretty good online, we'll see when we get it, hopefully it'll fit, I need a few bits. Feel of gauges, you know, just like anything you'd find down at Super Cheap Auto, Auto Pro, or those places, yeah pretty good, we'll see. My mate Jay uses these uh, when he, he builds race cars, so uh, anything that uh, you put in there, sticks to it, it's magnetised, so yeah, they're pretty good. I've got a few of them coming. Uh, this is like a T-handle extension for a socket. Uh, good for getting those hard to reach um, little buggerised um, screws. I haven't got it yet. This is a, uh, a case protector for your front sprocket. sprocket. Um, haven't got it yet, got it in blue, even though I'm doing a black bike. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I'll tell you when it gets here. 
These things I got yesterday, they're unbelievable. CNC cut aluminium look mint. And they're for 20 bucks. And they've got YZF 450 on them. Crooked, but it's on them. Another Carby uh, rebuild kit. I bought two. You know, because two is better than one. No, these things, oh God, I don't know why I bought these. But anyway, they're, they're like uh, upper front suspension covers, imitation, carbon, something, something. And <laughs> we'll see. These things are for my swing arm. They're like plastic guards, which is pretty good because it gets full of muck and stuff. So I'll chuck them on. And it's black for the theme bike. Oh, this is the bling I got from Wish. Uh, these things, imitation riding gloves. I got them, man. They're all right. I mean, I'm, I don't race motorbikes, so as long as I look the part. Got a couple of these for me and my mate Troy. Again, they, they should be fine until I get a stick through the eye. But yeah, they should be good. In me muffler plug, I got that in my um, completed bike. Seems to fit perfect. Bloody unreal. So the biggest risk of this whole project is sitting right in front of me right here. And uh, what is it, you may ask? Well, that's obviously a gasket um, package. It's round in nature. And the only thing that's round in nature on this motor is the piston. So yeah, I ummed it hard about spending, uh, what was it, $1,800 Australian to get a, a bloody, um, what's it called? Ah, oh, the name escapes me at the moment. Uh, one of those uh, fandangled American um, top and top and bottom end rebuild, you know, like with, with the hot cams and uh, wrench rabbit. That's it. That's it. Um, uh, that that was the plan, but because now I'm um, sitting at home with a buggered knee, uh, I've had to go down another path, and that path being Chinese replica parts. Anyway, without further, further ado, let's have a look. Uh, that's the uh, code. Let me know what that says. It doesn't really mean anything, but um, got it off Banggood, this one. Um, and, yeah, it's the piston. Rings and gaskets. You would not believe there's the, uh, there's the rings there. Like I said, uh, I uh, had to go the cheap option, but you know what? If I put these against one of those deer ones, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Well, I can't anyway. So, um, yeah, for $45 US, which is around 60 bucks Australian, you can get yourself a, oh, there's my clips for the wrist pin. You can get yourself a brand spanking new OEM replica piston um, made in China for a Japanese bike. Sacrilege. I know, but I'm broke, mate. So it's going to have to do. It's going to have to work. Now, on closer inspection, it doesn't look too bad. All the recesses there for the valves look not too bad at all. Yes, of course, they could probably be a little bit smoother and more refined. But again, we're, we're looking at a bush basher here. And, um, you know, it's going to cough and splutter. I know that. Um, so things aren't going to be too perfect. Oh yeah, there's a bit of an insignia there. It looks pretty professional. End for not going to work probably, but uh, we've got the uh, the Sarah coat replica uh, on the skirts. It looks pretty good. Look, I can't really complain. What's that saying there? Anyway, so yeah, that's it. Uh, what do we got in here? Wrist pin. And that's about it. So that's that's a lot of a lot of uh, um, I don't know what do you call it parts for sixty bucks. And uh, the cheapest I could get for OEM OEM part on this is around three hundred. So you know it's a win win. It may only work for two point six seconds, but for that two point six seconds it will work. Anyway, I thought I'd. Uh, 
show you guys that. Um, I'm pretty excited actually. I like the, I like a challenge and um, this certainly is one that may be insurmountable, but hey, we're gonna give it a go. So, let's do it. Yeah, g'day. Um, as I said in the previous video, I've had a go at the, um, the uh, carburetor uh, for the bike. And by have a go, I mean I've cleaned it. Um, I used a alkaline solution for cleaning metal parts and uh, <clears throat> let that up, sit overnight. I got it out and used the air compressor to blow all the, all the crap out of it. Um, and then I had a, a bit of a play with the wire wheel uh, on the drill uh, just to try and get some of that anodized, you know, that black sort of faded look you can see in there that's what it sort of goes like uh, this is the main body of the carby um yeah it's a, a kian car carby I, I don't know if i've pronounced that correctly but please correct me if i have um but yeah the yamaha uh, used these uh, this brand for this uh, particular model and uh yeah from all accounts they're very they're very good carbies you get the jetting right in them and uh they go like about out of hell so, um, yeah, so, anyway, so I've had a go at that, you know, and just having a bit of a play. That looks pretty good with the wire wheel. I mean, it's not finished yet. I've got to sort of give it a bit of a polish to get rid of those, um, get rid of those fine lines. If you have a look closely, you can sort of see, the, yeah, the wire wheel. You still see the marks from it. But hang on, it's, you know, it's a, it's a cheap dirt bike build, so it's not going to look like an oil painting. Um, yeah, again, I used a little Dremel, uh, which I bought off Wish um believe it or not and uh it did a pretty good job uh getting into the nooks and crannies here you can see yeah, it did not a bad job at all i was pretty happy with that um again i didn't have a go on the inside um but uh, as you can see the black sort of color with aluminium is exposed to air the chemical reaction um causes it to anodize and lose its luster as it's called uh, bits and bobs. Oh, I'm missing a wheel there. Oh, that'll be fun. Hopefully, I think I saw that in there. Um, I, I made a bit of stuff up here though. I um, got went to hell for leather with the wire wheel. Where is it? I think I can see it. Oh, there it is. You can see there that the wire wheel's hooked onto that little rubber gasket. So. Um, I may have to order another gasket for that, which I'm spewing because there was nothing wrong with that one. Um, and that essentially uh, controls air movement through the through the carby in a sliding sort of manner. So yeah, that could be quite critical. Uh, these parts, you know, don't really need much cleaning up. Obviously they're internalized. I forgot it. Oh, look at that. I mean, that, that, looks, that looks pretty good. It's not too bad if I do say so myself. I mean, I'm no panel beater or bloody painter or anything, but you know what? That looks pretty cool. Um, I may have to polish it a little bit to sort of get rid of those lines, but um, I'm pretty happy with that for this build anyway. Um, what else we got in there? Well, there's, there's a few bits and bobs and the float. The float doesn't look too bad. When I had it in the um, solution, it... Uh, yeah, it floated no dramas, didn't fill up with water, it's not cracked. Obviously it's quite a um, flimsy uh, piece of plastic on its own, but once it's in place it does a really good job. Yeah, well that's what I did uh, one day there, in, down in the uh, the work shed, or, or the garage, or I like to call it the garuggy. Um, down in the garuggy at my workbench, having a bit of a play with the wire wheel. Having a bit of fun, got the music cranking, um, sort of lost myself in what I was doing. It was a good, a good way to waste some time while covering from two knee operations. So yeah, I plan on doing this um, with the engine case as well. So I'll have a go with the um, the wire wheel and cleaning it right up so it all looks the same. And in fact, I've had a bit of a um, uh, a yarn to me mate, <coughs> um, Jace, who's a uh, panel beater spray painter. And um, he reckons a bit of clear coat over these parts should help them um, help them out stay that sort of nice colour that I'm trying to achieve and won't have to get the wire wheel out in another three years. That's in, you know, 
in, in case it does work, which at this stage is probably a 0.001% chance of the bike lasting more than, you know, a three-hour strap in the bush. But anyway, that's not that's not what we're what it's about. It's the journey, not the destination. So they keep telling me. Yeah, righto. Well, um, I'll next uh, put a bit of a slideshow up on uh, some of the things I've acquired from the reputable online shopping uh, apps that uh, I tend to have a addiction to. So uh, keep tuned, and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I've been ordering. Cheers. Well, thanks for putting up with that. I'm sure it was pretty hard listening to me wrap it on about basically nothing. Oh, I guess this wraps up the first video. I wanted to get everything out there, um, show you what I have, what the plan is, um, what parts I'm using, um, how I'm sort of going to start, I guess. A um, bit of a recap, I'm going to clean clean my parts down uh, before I start fitting uh, the new bits and bobs. Um, I'll get the frame out for paint, uh, disassemble, clean, sand back a bit, uh, yeah, and start uh, titivating um, the old girl up. So yeah, I, I guess uh, that what I wanted to do was to sort of let everyone know how I was going to go about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's been good fun. I've learned a heap, particularly about shooting videos um, but yeah uh, the next video we'll get into it and um, we'll uh, we'll start off by I'll do a bit of a rundown of the tools that I've bought um, off the online shopping to help with this uh, big big beast over here um, and then we'll start doing some things and uh, we'll kick it in the guts cheers for that um, Nice to meet you.